Hello and welcome to another Friday artwork video. So as I said in the previous video, as I was going through collecting together cards um, to do this series going forward and I wanted to go back in time to earlier sets, I stumbled across my boost my boxes with the cards that I'd opened for doing various Dollar Armour repack episodes. And I had so much fun looking through the sort of pre-modern cards that I randomly pulled, I thought I'd do a series of videos initially where I go through those. So last week it was Artifacts and Lands, so this week it's going to be all the white cards. There's quite a few here, and as I said in the previous video, I'm now going to do these videos in two parts, which I'm going to splice together. Uh, because they're older cards, not everybody w might be familiar with them, so I'm going to do um, the first part of the video where I'm zoomed out like this so you can see the whole card and then there'll be a second pass where I'm going to zoom in and I'll splice the two videos together. So let's go through here and look at some of these. These are in chronological order. Like I said some weird stuff is going to come up simply because you know it's whatever happened to end up in dollar armor repacks and uh, sometimes there's some quite surprises in here and you can see we've got some stuff here from i can never tell this is homelands or fallen empires i always forget because of the logo obviously a number of cards in here from uh, early core sets the white bordered ones uh, we got stuff this would be from chronicles because it has a set symbol on it but it's white bordered so originally that would have been from Arabian Nights and this would have been from Legends, but reprinted. There's some Ice Age. We're going to certainly see a, a very nice variety of uh, art styles here alliances yeah there's some nice uh, like animal ones you can also see the odd part of a cycle here and so well, you know other cards that have ended up being reprinted and turned up in um, commander product possibly obviously um, a lot of these yeah aren't particularly powerful cards but if you do have a, an interest in older sets or you know played around this time which which I didn't um, it, it is quite fun I remember initially you know I I got on board around what would it be 10th edition not so that's 10th edition not M10 so 10th edition was the core set before M10 and when I first saw the older border cards I didn't particularly like them but then over time I have have grown to really like them. Um, and we were talking about uh, this sort of card, I think last week, where I mentioned that the artifacts, you sometimes have these interesting artifacts that can be different creatures. Well, that also happened with, with enchantments like this, where it became something. Interesting version of, of pacifism artwork as well. Um, not everybody's familiar with the early versions of pacifism artwork and there's been different pacifism, pacifism artwork again I probably I first came across it around about 10th edition and that's the one that I'm more familiar with and that's the one that tends to get reprinted you can see there's a few rares here as well Voice, the voice of, um, they were a, a 
cycle. And of course the rebels It is always amusing what, what turns up in those repacks. Also with some of the creatures like the one back there, you know, it probably then reminds you of a particular mirrored pair. This was an odd one. Um, I'm unsure what this would have been printed from because it, it's a visions card but with a, a white border. Now I'm not sure if there was a later aggregate set or not. I'm unsure about that. If anybody knows where a, a visions card with a white border would have come from. Let me know because I'm, I'm curious. Rebel bird. I'm really looking forward once we get to uh, to zoom in on these. So it's quite a number of rebels They just cropped up in my uh, reprint openings. There's quite a number here as well. You just look at them. These would just be fun to stick in a commander deck just to throw people off slightly. Or bring a smile to people's face faces. Shackles that I pulled from decks. I've obviously only included uh, one copies. There's a few cards where I had duplicate copies. If anybody's ever opened repacks, um, they'll sometimes know if they get ones that seemingly were done are packed at the same time, you get a run of the same card. And it's, it's funny to see all these sort of quirky abilities which have relevance obviously for the set they were printed in and drafting. And then other, other things like these, you know, lockdown white spells, which are, are sort of variants of other spells we're more familiar with, you know, like pacifism type effects. Oh, Glory Seeker. One and a white for a 2-2. Two, two. Christmas Blessing. Wow. Yeah, see another one. Tap each player loses one life for each swamp he or she controls. Floating shield. Right, so I'll be back in a moment once I change the uh, change the zoom. So welcome back to part two. We zoomed in. Let's. Uh, Take a real close look at some of this old school artwork. Mm -hmm. 
The smile on my face is just getting bigger and bigger with some of these cards for lots of different reasons. Um, It's an angry elephant. The other fun thing with cards from this period is, you know, in terms of the colour pie, um, sometimes you see stuff printed in certain colours which you don't see again. Um, part of where I'm, you know, I might might take some of the deck musings episodes is to go down that hole a little bit um, and look at you know certain cards that may have I suppose crossed the floor so to speak for want of a better word where they've started out in in one colour and then moved into another and then you don't really see cards of that type crop up again. Except where they've been intentionally colour shifted for a set. Uh, at some point, you know, when I go back through properly with my binders, the plan is to feature certain uh, cycles where I've specifically tracked them down. I do really like the the Griffin artwork around that period, and um, there's a really nice um, sort of Griffin deck from around the period of um, would be I suppose Mirage was again another, and I, I have mentioned this many numerous times, where you know they produced some theme decks for the block because originally there were no in paper theme decks and they produced them when they released retrospectively released the set online and one of those decks was I believe a Griffin tribal deck if I've got that right but I can't remember which set from the block it was I think one of the cool things with um, you know this idea in Commander EDH um, of creating these toolkits is that you know you can create like a generic tribal toolkit which has all sorts of interesting tribal cards in it and then you know play around with certain underloved, underutilised tribal commanders or even just uh, one of the you know generic utility commanders like a five colour one I know there's a five colour tribal commander that could be used with creature types which don't have a specific commander for them is it moribund? But I think often, you know, Chromat's quite interesting just because of the utility on it. As a just sort of general five colour commander and then you just, uh, particularly, you know, when you're, the tribes uh, are, are one, the creature types are one where they, they crop up in, in all the colours with a good deal of, uh, of consistency and have, again, interesting utility on them. Um, one interesting one to try is, is a five colour beast deck because there's lots of beasts with interesting synergies on them
Was that, when they sort of search for other creatures of the same type, isn't that, is that called something like a recruiter effect? Something like that? It was done with rebels, it was done with mercenaries, I'm trying to remember what other creature subtypes it was done with. So next week I'll be moving on to blue cards, so the idea is to do an episode on each colour in my uh, Dollarama box and I'll just be doing the older cards and then after that I'll go on to you know where I've got certain binders for certain sets so you know maybe things like Ice Age and some of the other sets around that time but I might be able to find the odd older card from before that certainly some of the cards the nice thing about doing this and one of the reasons why i wanted to do it is there's a lot of those cards like pre-ice age um what you what you're cropping up at the top of the stack there that you saw so that's one way to get a look at them because i don't really have much stuff Pre Ice Age, where I've opened packs for. And we're nearly there. Pretty stern. <laughs> Just position that nicely. There we go. So, thanks once again for watching. Bye for now, and I will catch you again in the next video.